Hello and welcome to another episode of Building Modern APIs with RESTful. In this video, um, I want to show you how you can create your code resource to expose, as we said, that was our goal, the labels resource. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create a custom module and put our code there. Now, la, I'm going to use the same custom module for all of our resources. And while that is a good approach that I've been using in, in some projects, as some of you may want to use the same feature that you are using for the labels resource to put this uh, sorry, for the labels, record label content type to put your resource. So organize the, the code as you want. You don't have to have it all on the same um, custom module, but I'm going to do it just for the practicity of this example. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, if we go back, uh, if we go to the code side of this, um, so the first thing that you want to do is create a custom module. I'm uh, having my custom modules here in all sites, all modules custom. You want to create a, an, a module in here. And as you can see, this is very simple. It contains an info file and a module file. The module file is completely is completely empty and the info file the only thing that it contains is this registry autoload psr4 so for restful 2.0 or 2.x you are going to have a developer experience that is heavily inspired by drupal 8 but uh, the, this module is still drupal 7 but it will start feeling like you're doing it uh, for Drupal 8. So one of the things that I like the most for of Drupal 8 is that it gives you a more modern developer experience. Uh, it lets you uh, leverage classes in, in a good way. And uh, I, I think that it's a great advance. So there are a couple of modules that allow you to uh, do this kind of stuff with Drupal 7. Uh, one of them is registry autoload. What this module will let you is uh, it will save you from, de from declaring all of the classes here in the info file, right? Uh, so in Drupal 7, if you want some classes to be declared and read by the registry, you need to declare them as files in here. Instead, by using the registry auto load, which is a dependency of the plug module, which is a dependency of RESTful, so you will have to, to install the registry auto load anyways. Um, by doing this, what you're saying is, uh, hey Drupal, look for any class that you couldn't find right away in a PSR4 structure. And now what that means is that uh, we are going to have to create our classes and our resources are going to be classes. So we're going to do that right now because we want to create the record label resource in a very particular structure. So this is going to be um, a mapping between the class and the the structure of the folders that lead to the file that contains the class. So that sounds confusing, but uh, what it means is that inside of your custom module, you need to create a directory called src, source, and uh, basically that's it. Uh, now you just have to build a, a tree that will build a namespace. Now the plug module is like in Drupal 8, the, the plugin system. So it requires that all plugins are inside of a folder called plugin. And uh, the RESTful module requires that you put your resources inside of a folder called resource. So that's, that's it. Now from here, you are completely free to put the, the nesting structure that you want. So uh, myself, for my resources, what I like is to create 
an sorry a folder called entity because these resources are going to be this uh, record label is going to be based on entities then I want to add the entity type and then finally the name of the resource <coughs> so that's my preference uh, you are required to have these three in order for RESTful to discover your, your resources but these ones are just my organization structure so feel free to play with this and uh, there are no strings attached here so in here I'm gonna create a class and I'm gonna give it the name of labels one zero so see that I'm encoding the version of the of the resource in the name of the class that's my personal preference what you could do is something like this and that's it but I kind of like to have all the versions in the same folder and that makes it uh, a little bit easier for me so uh, let's go back and I'm gonna create it in here labels one zero and then for the namespace uh, we said that there is thanks to registry autoload there is a mapping of PSR4 which means that we have the the global uh, Drupal here in the namespace and then backslash the name of your custom module here which is rest full tutorial and then we're gonna skip the source directory because it's gonna be always the same and then uh, we're going to just type plugin and then resource then entity node labels so that's our namespace uh, also you want the file name to be with the same name of the class and with the extension of PHP and that's the that's the default so if you're using PHP storm uh, you can just use this class generator and it's gonna do it for you so that will create these labels 1o in inside of the directory and it will give it the namespace and the name that you decided uh, here it creates a <coughs> sorry uh, it creates a comment with the full path to the class so uh, once that you've done this you have successfully created a class with a namespace that's that can be automatically discovered by Drupal but you don't have a plugin just yet so for that uh, what you need is an annotation uh, what an annotation is is that I'm gonna create a comment here and uh, by putting some special syntax I'm gonna turn this from a regular class to a plugin so uh, this is what you need um, this is the name uh, or the type of the plugin uh, it's a plugin of type resource and in here you're going to configure the plugin so that's the first part to turn a class into a plugin the second part is to implement the correct interface so in this case it's resource interface and yeah that's it uh, but right now this resource doesn't do much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give you the tool that you're going to be using the whole time so I'm going to go to the RESTful module directory here and I'm going to show you where to find the examples because you are probably going to be basing your examples your resources on examples anyways and that's a great idea um, so I'm going to here inside of RESTful modules there's a module called RESTful example and of course we have SSC plugin resource and then 
the structure that we want and as you can see there are lots of examples here with articles that you can that you can leverage we we're going to use this one as our as our example to base our resource on um, I just chose randomly so this is one the restful example inside of restful modules but there are more if you go to the tests module to the test folder there's a restful test module and in here there are even more you see that here there are more test articles uh, there are for the custom entity main there are for taxonomy terms etc there are, uh, there are lots and lots of examples so uh, you probably will find whatever you you need inside of the the examples so as i said uh, we're going to use that example the articles 1.0 and um, let me go back to here our labels um, we are going to copy the annotation so what's in here is going to define how you configure your resource so I'm going to just paste this in here and then I'm going to adapt this replace articles by labels and then uh, maybe like this replace all okay and then we're going to check that everything makes sense so the first thing that um, the first setting that is important is the name the name is the the unique ID of this resource so with this name we we should be able to load the complete uh, the, the complete plugin so uh, this is going to be the part of the resource and this is going to be the part of the of the version so with the with the resource name you have the resource and the the version so next is the key resource which we are setting to labels this is going to define the name of the resource and the name of the resource is used in places like the URL so if I were to change this to record labels to access this we would go to API record labels instead of labels so depending on what you put here you will have a different URL or another uh, now this is not the only way to customize the, the URL you can have a fully customizable hook menus through through RESTful and um, I guess that I'm going to show you this uh, way later because that's more advanced configuration so right now we're going to leave it as as labels and here this is the label of the resource so I'm going to give this a uh, nice capitalized L and uh, this description looks good now these are authentication types this means uh, for the authentication you, you could omit this but uh, it's good to, to always have the authentication declared in your resource so what basically this means is that uh, there are several ways of authenticating your request or identifying your user on the request so uh, we can know that this particular request by, uh, was made by an admin or by an editor or by an anonymous user because as you know admins have access to more entities or nodes than than the anonymous user so when they are requesting node 14 even if it's, it's unpublished we want to return it to the admin but not to the authenticated user so this is how uh, you declare the different ways that a request can be authenticated so by setting it to true you are basically saying that you can use whatever is available in the in the system so RESTful comes with three different authentication types one is cookie you can send the session cookie to authenticate your request the other one is basic auth which is basically sending your username and password uh, base64 encoded uh, that's a standard and then uh, finally there's 
the token bearer authentication, which is basically passing back and forth a token. Um, by doing this, we're saying that we're using any of this. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you are not satisfied with the authentication providers that come out of the box or you need to use something uh, like uh, LDAP or something like that you can just declare your authentication type and by setting it to true you will always be able to use all all those that come out of the box and all those that you have declared in your in your Drupal installation. Uh, this authentication optional here means that you can use this resource without having to authenticate the request. So that means that uh, this resource is available to anonymous users. So this is probably going to be set to true most of the time. Um, I'm going to skip this and move to versioning. Um, to create a new version, uh, just you just need to create a new class that has a different version keys and that's it it's pretty self-explanatory we, we're gonna do this in the next video uh, because it's very easy and it's uh, and it's very useful um, and last and most importantly is the data provider so the data provider key in the resource configuration is gonna define how you get the information from Drupal to expose it through RESTful so 90% of the time you're going to be exposing entities uh, and there is a data provider that comes out of the box of course that is for entities in, in RESTful so uh, bear in mind that you may find some data providers that are not entities and this will look a little bit different for you so for the entity data provider you have to give it uh, the entity type, which is node, that's correct, and the bundle, which is the for nodes, it's the node type, and that is not correct, it's record label. And let me check that in here, content types. Um, yeah, record label, I'm gonna copy this and paste, so I'm, I'm sure that I don't have uh, any typos. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to, to the example and uh, to the restful folder I, I cannot find you here um, nope in tests, modules, src I just want to show you how the data provider can look a little bit different because in this case we are not exposing an entity but we are exposing rows in a, in a database table uh, that can be used, for instance, for uh, exposing menus uh, because in Drupal 7 you don't have entities uh, out of the box for, for menu items. So, uh, yeah, this would be a way to do it. So, as you can see, there are other entity, pr sorry, data providers that can be handy that come out of the box, like the, like the database query and uh, and the plugins data provider, uh, the plugins data provider used for auto discovery, um, for letting you know which RESTful plugins are available in the system. So um, yeah, that being said, moving back to here, that's uh, all that that we need. We only have to start implementing all these methods, and that seems like a lot of work, and probably is, and that's why there is a a base class that you can extend that's going to be very useful for you which is called rest full entity uh, sorry actually is resource entity all right which is called resource entity and I'm going to delete this because it's not used anymore and this is going to implement all of the methods that that you need and give you the opportunity to overwrite those that you want to change their behavior uh, so feel free to explore the classes that there are uh, this is very good when you have a, a custom entity but since nodes are kind of a very widely used entity there's a base class that is a 
a little bit more tune with uh, that it's a little bit more tuned to uh, what nodes do and it's gonna be based on the entity so let me show you the idea here so uh, basically what this is going to do is it, it's uh, going to prepare and set the the UID for the for the node uh, so you know uh, it has some nice things here so you feel free to use the base class that makes more sense to you uh, in this case for me research node uh, happens to to work very well so uh, just like this you have your you have your resource exposed um, but uh, I guess that the question here is what fields are we exposing because uh, as you may know we don't expose everything and just forget about it we need to be declarative with what we expose and uh, the restful node or actually the restful entity uh, comes with some code that's gonna uh, define which fields are going to be exposed uh, so we're gonna look at that next uh, we just finally want to save this and probably trash you see all I'm just getting rid of whatever was in the in the previous tests that I made trash enable rest full oops rest full tutorial Okay, it's probably enabled, so we just have to go to slash API and slash labels, just like we said, because it's set in here. And uh, we should see something, right? Other line records, this is the label, the ID, and a link to, to itself. And since we are just uh, listing all of the labels, this is an array and we can even make sure that we can access the particular record by going to labels 54 nice uh, this is not a listing anymore and we can uh, start building from there so i guess i'll see you in the next video thank you